Okay. Okay. Uh, today we have uh, eminent personality, Dr. K. R. Anthony. Uh, he he specializes in public health. He did his uh, MBBS and post graduation in pediatrics from Saint John Medical College, Bangalore. And thereafter, he specialized in tropical pediatrics from Liverpool Liverpool School of Tropical Medicine, United Kingdom. Dr. Anthony is currently an independent monitor for national health mission government of india earlier he has served as director state health system resource center chhattisgarh raipur and provided technical assistance for implementing the state health program before that he has served unicef in various capacities at the national and at the state level in orissa uh, uttar pradesh andhra pradesh and karnataka he has several years of working experience in the field of pediatrics community health primary health care polio eradication malaria safe motherhood and child survival etc he is life member of the indian academy of pediatrics indian public health association and public health resource network he is also member of the who international technical and evaluation committee for polio eradication in india and also a member of the national health mission common review mission he regularly writes on public health issues in dailies like uh, hindu the indian express deccan herald economic and political weekly and british medical journal so as you know the today today's webinar title is restructuring Indian public health system, uh, short and medium term goals. So he will be uh, touching some issues. Uh, as you know, there are many issues from uh, access to health service, ranging from access to health service to health coverage, uni universal health coverage, quality of services, building infrastructures, etc. Then out of pocket expenditures, uh, uh, health insurance, social determinant of health. So let us listen to him what he covers today. Uh, welcome, Dr. Uh, uh, Anthony, and over to you. Good evening, friends, and uh, at the outset, so let me thank uh, Egro Foundation and uh, Charanjit Singh Ji, Singh Ji and uh, Dr. Ratan Ji. Okay. 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 Second slide is on, can we be instrumental in changing for better the lives and health of the people? Uh, next slide. Oh, no. Okay, some time ago, some time ago, the, I was asked to be in the panel in a TV show in which the tragedies of infant deaths in hospitals of Garakpur uh, Medical College was uh, presented and uh, I was taking part and I found a lot of accusation against the ruling party. It was a political discussion rather than a discussion on the public health. The same similar type of infant deaths took place in Gorakhpur and Sarukabad later, and there in Jharkhand, and then even in Raipur Medical College, which shocked us. We innocent babies die in the new, newborn care ward, and then the, the, somebody, the ruling party or the government has to fix the accountability, so they fix the punish the pediatrician. So they fix. Hello, can you hear? Yes, yes, we can ah, hear you. So, okay, then the lack, there is, a, so the question was, there was a lack of oxygen. And then there is a medical care was not very energetic. And, but nobody discusses the poor resources or poor governance, and very few are addressing the health system failure in this day. Next slide. But this is one part of the story. We don't address the basic health system reformation. Uh, uh, now, 
with this recently the coronavirus taught us many lessons and that is many lessons are one is it is like an mri or ct scan of the public health system the system is vulnerable and it's fragile and and that is due to the cumulative neglect for decades in the funding in the staffing infrastructural and technology upgradation it has resulted and result is is a dismembering and annihilation of the public health system it has proved but at the same time it has proved the relevance and essentiality of the public health it is needed the nation needs it with a and it needs an immediate upgrade it is a, a only option for the poor and marginalized so if that is the case what is a cure what is the treatment for this ailing system what is the rehabilitation of this system which is but when you discuss that we must very be very clear that it is on a few uh, principles that is health is a basic human right and being a democratic country in our constitution it is guaranteed under the right to life and title men and class right to health is embedded in the right to life uh, 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 clause but what is problem is it is not a justiciable right you can go to a court and demand that you file a case against the state that it has in provided adequate health care to the citizen so in that situation a welfare nation has to be uh, patriarchal take care of the every children or, or every citizen of the country and it is that welfare nation's responsibility to the private uh, not to abdicate that responsibility to a private sector or to entrust insurance sector to manage it private sector is heterogeneous and scattered in its uh, presence and also in availability some days it is available some days it may not be available private sector displays its one a few faults inherent fault of its one is that lack of standardization and la- uh, uh, there is a medical anarchy and different treatment lines and uncontrolled exploitative pricing so this corona pandemic taught us the weaknesses of the private system and the weaknesses of public health system so we need a health system reform now when you say health system reform this picture is from chatisgarh and when chatisgarh state was formed they were thinking very seriously whose health care we are talk- talking about the pro the pro poor people policy was part of the reform agenda i, I am i uh, vivek are you on the slide on the man with the two hay bundle vivek i can't hear the audio okay uh, ratanji yes yes ah is uh, the next slide is uh, three questions are uh, am i on that same slide are you on the same slide the fourth seventh yeah, slide yeah three question yeah now it is okay. uh, three, yeah, three yeah. questions we can after, see yeah, we can hear after i'll say it next uh, uh, slide like that okay the three questions now three question fundamental questions whose healthcare we are talking about we are saying being a, a democratic country healthcare of all and then everybody gets equal treatment and it is there is an equality but also there is an equity equity principle equity principle means is more than what you are equal to share you get if you are disadvantaged and if you are poor and your needs more it is a, it's a little bit of a patriarchal approach of a welfare nation to take care of care of its marginalized poor in the peripheries and if they are voiceless and neglected you take care of them second question is who will do it so in a socialist republic of course the government is uh, uh, in a welfare state because the government is for the people and by the people we cannot expect a non government agency to do it then the question comes who will meet the expenditure the government of the people from the taxes paid by all citizens of that state has to do it you can you cannot escape that by just paying some insurance premium and the agency will take care of it next question next uh, slide here comes the concept of universal health coverage which evolved after the prime uh, it almata conference of universal primary health care so primary health care aimed at a basic health services in the peripheries and all people but it didn't go beyond that but universal health coverage is what we are currently speaking about uh, and 
it is needed for the sustainable development goals you, uh, sdgs uh, what you have to achieve it needs uh, it is needed for reduction of poverty and it is needed for reducing social inequities so india is striving for all these is it not so universal health coverage is can be achieved by uh, only the government has to do and the insurance packages and coping in private sector is all tall orders and it is not practical that way even aishman bharat of the aishman bharat of the uh, pran mantri jan uh, arogya yojana uh, is a question mark there are missing elements in it and also the world bank pushed the uh, idea of public private partnership next slide what do you mean by universal health coverage universal health coverage of course you are ensuring not only the primary health care but the secondary and also the tertiary health care and it uh, revolves on three dimensional expansion one is improving the access of to the people it is a horizontal coverage increase that is from everywhere not only the district headquarters and cities and towns it is not only the chcs but it goes to the primary health center to the every last village so and the isolated hamlets and cut off islands everywhere so you are the wider coverage of beneficiaries and a more frequency of services not once in a while regularity of services is there then you get a, Uh, a horizontal, uh, not only a horizontal and a vertical coverage increase the range of services. Earlier, all primary health center uh, used to cover immunization, family planning, and basic some curative treatment. But here, you have got referral treatment, you have got orthopedic care, you have got accident and emergency, you have got coronary care unit and burns unit, and you expand to the extent of even some of the states under universal health coverage, you are giving cochlear implant and congenital heart disease as benevolent scheme from the chief minister's fund. So that is also range of services also increase vertically, horizontally you reach to the people, and overall a three dimensional increase of quality of services. That is the, the standards of the services in, is improved, and there is a lot of technological advancement: CT scans, MRI, and uh, uh, cardiac pacemaker implantation. All these things are improving the quality of services, and that is all aiming at. towards one thing that is the recipient the client should be satisfied and the client is satisfied he knows the value of the care he is getting or she is getting and because she is it she is participating in the implementation of the program also in the monitoring of the program and so it is enabling communities to demand services and it becoming an empowerment process solutions also they find if additional funds are raised they will be there next slide there is a difference between universal health coverage and universal health care in the health system restructuring we must be clear about that universal health coverage is of the services of which is restricted to the health department that is uh, we are covering covering the services we are expanding those services but when you say universal health care we know health cannot be achieved in isolation by department of health alone it needs uh, uh, water safe water drinking water it needs sanitation toilet it needs uh, smokeless cholas nutrition food security it needs basic education primary education and it needs a, a regular income for livelihood options it needs poverty alleviation program it needs communities building and community empowerment societies cooperative societies it needs gender equity it needs social equity so if this is the wide spectrum all this comes under the universal health care so if that is the case then the health ministry has to be little more tactical it has to get the other ministry support and intersectoral convergence next one it's a cost of health care we are slide if you are, are you following uh, uh, then if means it needs is uh, it ha somebody has to pay from their pocket and that means a financing system is uh, required to ensure this type of quality of services and and also that if the citizen has to pay for it they will end up in a financial hardships because 
the illness and diseases are more prevalent among the poor people, whereas the better off and well-nourished people, they don't fall ill that often. So there is, these poor people once again pushed into poverty because of the healthcare costs. And that's why healthcare expenditure must be from the government. And if the government is spending low, automatically it will be pushed to the citizens' pocket. And your pockets are dug deep and it is uh, it is uh, it pinches you uh, uh, very much. So that's why in a democratic country, financing healthcare must be from a pooled resource of all the citizens, whether healthy, sick, all who have to pull in by way of tax. So a tax-funded healthcare financing system only can pay. Now, tax-funded into paying a premium is again ifs and buts. Why should we pay? If you pay the premium and you depend upon the quality of services ensured by the insurance sector, it is a, it is a tricky thing. You don't get one insurance sector is poorly enrolled, and it is whether even if it is mandatory or voluntary. And but when you claim the cost reimbursement, it is poorly reimbursed. A lot of claim settlement ratio is very uh, not that appreciable. So this is a problem with that uh, insurance-based agency. There are a lot of advocates for insurance uh, modality. That is a different issue, but I am putting forward my views. Next. Now, if health of care has to be, next slide, per capita health expenditure varies in states. Stay, stay, health is a state uh, subject, and, uh, and you find this wide variation. Some time ago, there was UPS play, paying only 790 per annum, whereas national level, it was just double of it, 1,538. So when you the state puts in low investment, puts in less money, the poor have to spend outside, and there will be, you'll get poor spending, gives poor returns. You don't. Even in the last budget, when our health finance minister, put, we all had expected under the uh, corona pandemic background, we will have a very high allocation. But we had 35,000 crores for the vaccine purchase and another, in the sanitation round, about 50,000 crores were put. We were looking forward to at least allocation of 80,000 crore for the health out of which this chunk, the major part of 55 to 60,000 will go to, into the national health mission. That did not happen. In fact, the overall net expenditure uh, for the uh, thing was little less. Globally, the proportion of ideal GDP for health expenditure is around 6%. And so immediate allocation of 3% of GDP for healthcare in India is what we have been expecting, and it will have an incremental increase to reach 6% over a period of 10 years or so, but which did not happen. The fact, next slide, health expenditure by government is very slow. Can you see all the financial year and the proportion of GDP budget, health budget? Then 2009 to 10, it was 1.4%. 13, it came down, 1.2. 15, 16 is 1.15. 16, 17 is 1.18 and then the slight, slight increase even last 18 19 it was 1.3 even last year it was just uh, over uh, uh, over 1.2 uh, not past uh, 1.3 so when we were proclaiming that next slide forward we were proclaiming india is, is moving towards a middle income country uh, like brazil M mexico south africa and the uh, brics countries and but what happened, we were ambitious because our financial economy was growing well. And then, but what happened, the uh, GDP uh, was, there was a rise in GDP, but the gap between the rich and the poor within the country was widening. There is even last year in the corona pandemic, it is about 10 corporate houses made a profit and increased, the profit has increased so much, but the, the reserve GDP has gone down. So. In net result is with wide inequity, what is happening in India is we are carrying a high burden, poverty burden population in the globe. We are 22% of the world population, which is poverty burdened. And that is a challenge. Uh, and then there, there is a challenging burden. There is a double burden of one is communicable diseases and a double burden of communicable diseases and non-communicable 
this is so, so there is double burden on the poor majority, uh, majority is a very very heavy burden on them and what ns also, so estimate showed is 20% of all ailments go uh, untreated because they don't have money so unless debilitating most tend to self treat or ignore or delay availing the treatment or resort to locally available cheaper rural medical practitioners and quacks. So this is something. Next, uh, what is happening with the, the poverty burden and widening gap? I already told about the government's interest rate per capita expenditure. 2004-05, this might be in Bihar, it was 93. From there to Himachal Pradesh, even a decade ago, 2004-05 figure I'm talking, which is quoted in Lancet series in 2011, in Himachal Pradesh is 630, whereas uh, Bihar, it was 93, this uh, paper by Balrajan. And Kerala Shastra Saita Parishat, Kerala Science and Literature Society, had a study done, which has showed in the quarter of 25 years, a quarter century, in uh, 60 times or increase in out of pocket expenditure in 1984 it was rupees 88 per capita it went up to 5679 so, so this huge out of pocket expenditure increase has mainly because of the prices of the drugs have gone up and also diagnostic test so india's out of pocket expenditure even in uh, 2010 it was 61 even last year, it is around 62. And we are spending hardly 4.4% of the uh, government spending on health by India. We were very low in the uh, global ranking. Now, are you, are you, next slide, are you seeing the two kids? Hello? Are you on track with me? Hello? Can yeah. someone? Yes, yes, okay, yes, okay. yes, okay. yes. When I ask, yes. I yes, want to. I'm I'm blindly navigating without seeing this. My only seeing on my screen. So you see this uh, in a welfare nation, the nation, the ruling government is given this role of protecting you in their palm, and no harm is done. That is very symbolic photograph. And but you see on the other side, there is elder sibling who is taking care of two younger siblings, and all three of them are malnourished. So India is not a high economy nation. It's a low income country moving on to the middle income economy. So the elder brother himself is malnourished to take care of the equally malnourished younger sibling. So that is a poor dilemma in the uh, country. Now, under this background, next slide. This National Rural Health Mission came in 2005. It had a good vision. It, it realized Delhi-based centralized planning won't work. There should be a decentralization for district management of health program and health service. And that district action plan should be participatory bottom-up planning. And it must have all the quality ensured and there is a quality assurance both in uh, services and it should be equally reflected by a client satisfaction. And no different departments and program, vertical program, should work as standalone program, but it has to have an intersectoral conversion so that optimum outputs are obtained by pooled resources and pooled interventions uh, and resources of human beings, staff, everything. Then if you are aiming at such a beautiful district health plan, it is accountable to the people of the district. It must have a define, it must define a time-bound goals what changes the district should have take, should take place in the district and report publicly on their progress after open audit, including social audit. And it is to improve the access of the rural people to the health services, to improve especially the women and children for an equitable, affordable, accountable, and very effective primary health care, and from there to the secondary health care and even tertiary health care. So it needed a lot of uh, principal changes. There is a paradigm shift from a very audit-oriented, guidelines-fixed distrust of spending. You first distrust a person who is spending the money, and from there, distrust to a trust at the paradigm shift. 
and there is no rigid rules everything but it's a inflexibility to more flexible local level adaptation and alternative thinking more centralized to decentralized action and you to make it realize you fully empower the functionaries with a clear cut role clarity of functions with adequate funds so overall this should go uh, along with a capacity building at all levels from the uh, gram sabha to higher up to the district now if you are demanding more health expenditure from the gdp 1.3 percentage to almost 3 percentage you are loaded with a lot of funds and if to manage it properly you need next slide efficient state and district level health system you need to manage it the center must assist all states technically in improving their health system that is where the health the central government should work very strongly and it must have a two prong strategy one is the management of efficiency in spending and planning and also absolute transparency in transactions so lower level spending means not out of range spending you are visible to even from delhi it can monitor so very transparent system of transaction you need a last you need the national level management experts mbas and uh, highly qualified health planners policy formulators or can be deployed in state level adaptation of overall health goals of the country and adaptation of it you need a national cadre of public health experts like indian administrative service there can be a indian medical service long time back they were thinking about it now it is still in cold storage there could be a state level public health cadre like in tamil nadu they have got exclusively looking at a uh, public health cadre which will take care of this planning and then we have got an exclusive public health cadre they will look at this policy uh, translation of policies into a program uh, planning and you will see that you no know, more this debacle of uh, ophthalmologists managing a malaria control program and dermatologist uh, instead of managing uh, leprosy eradication uh, ent surgeon controlling in many states it's like that any any program you are given you have become the deputy director in the district to manage it so that sort of anomalies where the carpenter makes the uh, the or, uh, makes the ornaments and the goldsmith makes the uh, cupboard that sort of anomaly in the public health system should disappear next slide what is how do we absorb if this is a mid term and long term perspective how do you absorb more funds and what is the capacity building you need a stronger professional project management team in every state now for that what happened in national health mission national health mission has contracted 2 lakh 75000 across the country in about 730 or district consultants and technical hands gynecologists obstetrician anesthetists to mba managers uh, account chartered accountants and uh, uh, data uh, statistical experts uh, all uh, mathematical modeling experts everybody on disease surveillance everything you have tech, so many technical hands who were not there in the state government salary role we have recruited and it has been found it is essential to run the project activities of this dimension and it did add value to the program implementation so that was the cornerstone in transforming a departmental activity of health services as a mission instead of a departmental activity it did improve the quality and it led lead to more client satisfaction and it is also seen because the quality client satisfaction improved i have found the phenomenal improvement in uh, uh, kbk districts in orissa and even in bihar some other places where the people started coming to a bekari sarkar hospital uh, hospital their people have started coming and if we have found in national health mission these 275000 contractual workers are there and making a difference you have to make them as part of a system and continue paying their salary and add ex extract work from them technical uh, output from them and you will definitely increase the uh, absorption of fund in a meaningful way 
one of the differences that made with a national health mission is the ashas they are i saw you can see these type of women next slide can you see that ashas ashas of these are ashas of, of a chc in the upper subanchari district arunachal pradesh when i visited there it is nearly china border areas and you see and this is from the china border arunachal pradesh to kanyakumari tirunal veli district to the west uh, in surat and kutch to uh, manipur uh, you will see these ashas everywhere and they were the link and a huge army of 9 lakhs it was about 8 lakhs uh, earlier now they are about 9 lakhs women and they are called part time voluntary workers voluntary is highly exploitative term it is just uh, you are exploiting uh, their work and goodwill i was saying that it is uh, you want to escape the prevailing labor laws of uh, you know ensuring a good salary and there may be other obligations like pension and things like that. they were the backbone of the surveillance activity in the community uh, in, during the pandemic contact tracing getting suspects tested quarantine of the family members convincing them on domiciliary care isolation of clinically asymptomatic positive and reverse quarantine of the uh, elderly all this my question is if access are inevitable as an intermediary between health officials and the community accept them as your staff and pay them right and charge it to national health mission and the access can be trained for a delivery of a lot of goods in chatisgarh the mitanians we of which i was the director of the mitanian program in chatisgarh 60000 of women Ill, uh, illiterate women but we trained them to treat malaria to diagnose malaria to diagnose pregnancy using pregnancy kit and to give artemis in tre uh, treatment radical treatment and you even to the extent of making the newborn resuscitation in a home delivery when the institution delivery rate was only 60% about 30% of the delivery is were home delivery we found these are ashas could be trained or mitanin by the way mitanins are the uh, uh, prototype of asha seeing the mitanin experience in chatisgarh government of india decided to scale it up at national level as ashas so these mitanin we could train and they do mucus sucker to such a next uh, next slide mitani learning skill of bag and mask ventilation which is now being applied uh, even in uh, in the uh, hypoxic patients in the icus where there is a shortage of oxygen at least you give ventilation with this uh, passive ventilation with that next slide so this is the scope of uh, the uh, level to which assess can be trained and you can assume though it is 9 lakh load of 9 lakh persons to be paid a minimum wage is such is 8000 rupees or 9000 rupees per month that's worth it now let me come to uh, the other side we said in a universal health care approach we need to get uh, uh, funds for the our other departments which has got a uh, they are health determinants like nutrition water sanitation education there must be a concomitant increase in the allocation of funds for primary education quality learning there and icds the food supply hot cooked meals and food security and livelihood security i'll expand further let me come to the issue of water alone next slide can you see a, a, a lady with the uh, two pots in her hands okay are you are you with me ratan ji the lady yes sir with... okay okay yes sir okay okay that this is very familiar picture in drought prone areas in summer season you walk half a kilometer with these pots of water and your children also don't go to school because of uh, they also help in getting water and i've seen more miserable picture of a three pot figure of women the three pot figure is one pot of water on your head delicately balanced like a kuchipudi dancer and you get another pot on the side not the pot of water but a two year old babe, child which is crying and it is being carried by the mother on the on her armpit 
and you get the third pot right in front because the heart she is already six months pregnant or seven months pregnant. Another pot of tummy in this the baby grows, and those who are pediatricians and those who are medical uh, knowledge will understand third trimester diversification of calories is a, at the exploitation of the baby which needs that calorie to put on the muscle mass to put on the growth and that muscle mass you get a compromise you get an intra uterine growth retardation and the output is if you have spent calories in collecting firewood climbing up the hill or bringing water hard labor in third trimester you get a low birth weight baby and that is what is happening in many of the drought prone mel dot area karaport uh, many of these drought prone areas this is what happened you in in corona pandemic next slide corona pandemic we learned about how to queue up not to overcrowd and but in these type of scenarios where so many women have to struggle and fight to get their pots into the single well there to collect the water where is the question of physical distancing and you, it only depicts what is the short, what level of shortage of water is there and you talk about health next slide these children in and out of school is a tragedy it's a tragedy of health it's a tragedy of the development of the country because they have entered the school they got some uniform they have, had been to school term but they drop out they may because the master is not there teacher absenteeism is very high or the learning is not made like interesting so they come out and they are they are roaming around wasting time and there is no uh, uh, minimum levels of learning attained by any chance and they become uh, a, a demographic burden rather than a demographic uh, advantage for your population i i used to get thrilled next slide this when the girls are on the bicycles going to school after 8th class 9th class or 10th class you find that is the harbinger of uh, of tomorrow a better tomorrow because studies in latin american countries have proved a uh, 3 years into the schooling of the girl child brings down the infant mortality level without schooling of one uh, an imr level of 110 16 or 120 per thousand brings down to straight away four years of schooling brings down to 90 and you put another three more years of schooling if she reaches by seventh class the infant mortality comes down to 65 then you uh, put a uh, high school pass high school if she completes high school period the imr drops to about 50 and that is what happened in kerala in southern states where the literacy level went up so the chandra babu naidu gifted all adolescent girls blue bird cycle rally cycle to all girls with what confidence they tried to into and it used to me immensely make me happy about these girls with such confidence ride their cycle where the boys are not given these cycles they go and that is uh, sign of those villages it have a lesser infant mortality lesser maternal mortality rate rate after 10 years when they become married now so dr anthony anthony dr anthony uh, just one minute uh, i think uh, uh, we are half 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 way in between uh, uh, you yeah. have 50 slides i think uh, so uh, i got uh, i got uh, uh, we are uh, yeah 29 yes 20, uh, If you can uh, okay. select the will... important ones. Okay, the, then I'll have to say. Are... Yeah, we I'll have already another five minutes the... because already started with ten minutes late. So we will. Yeah, 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 I'll right, just right. okay. Uh, I'll probably we can come on. I will say one plea which makes a difference is make the planning cycle for five years and not annual. A lot of time and energy is wasted. It if you have got a whole process of a defined five year goals. and your uh, annual budget it becomes every year you don't have to work on a new budget and everything it is only on the main goals are set you are marked uh, uh, achievable the strategies are clear it same thing continues for five years and you can change next uh, thing next slide five years versus an annual cycle you make it a five year plan and you just get a reimbursement of annual fund allocation because of that this is one way of improving uh, fund allocation and health okay i uh, the next slide application of information technology and e governance one way of 
avoiding corruption and improving everything to use web based technologies or for advertisement of vacant post in tender e tendering procurement it becomes everything very transparent no file movements on that only electronic approvals and with uh, password protected approvals on the system and that means i i just want to next uh, this is uh, i want to speak of oh, I, i can't stop talking about this this is an anm in tamia block in madhya pradesh climbing down you know, or almost like a crater like tatal kota hamlet down below it's like a meteorite stuck there and it is a big uh, crater so she takes 2 hours with vaccine carrier to climb down and 3 hours to climb up but she does it because she is a native she doesn't care for the medical officer's opinion or appreciation he comes hardly 10 days to that phc but she does it uh, but, so that made me realize who should be entering our medical school you you need whether it is anm or gnm all these difficult areas you put reservation for the candidates of those areas who have got cultural affinity and more commitment to their own community and train them and it is possible even if the highly qualified and uh, uh, candidates are there they are not there still you can train them up for local posting and within the district posting those areas because where the city bred doctors don't go city bred uh, nurses won't go you can and if it is available you can train them one example is this girl next slide a tribal girl of ganyari in bilaspur district who is trained class passed in uh, uh, tiger forest village and she is trained to by cardiologist in aims at 10th class only but she is doing echocardiography and echo is done what i'll just skip next three slides and come to that uh, one circle where you need even if you can put a uh, categorize the phcs which are uh, district just uh, just one one minute uh, uh, vivek ye jo sir aage chaliye okay uh, yeah. uh, that circle this this okay there is one slide in a circle okay yeah next okay uh, uh, that uh, you are in that okay the principle is you have a fair transfer posting transfer and uh, next policy. next okay so that that if you for if a doctor has served minimum 5 or 10 years in the periphery then you move them into sub district level and or sub division hospital and finally to the district quarters if you but in the meantime you can go for pg you can be promoted to a district hospital and if you don't get a vacant post you can settle in a sub divisional town and decide your future to keep the service establish your clinic or whatever it is there and you know you are going to there. but you won't get rotten in the periphery all the time so that is what we did in chatisgarh next three slides you can finish principles of posting i let me the principles of posting last slide there is principle of posting no direct posting at of an mbbs level to a specialist cadre leave vacancy in district hotels by influence no specialist first recruited to phc a pg qualified cell should not rot in a primary health center they should be utilized in your uh, in your uh, district hospitals or chcs as specialists so that is what we did in chatisgarh with uh, mr vigas shil who is the current joint secretary uh, ministry we we found 35 of specialists uh, wasting their time in phc we pulled them out another pg assistant medical officers recruitment by state public service commission we had 61 specialist we is to be posted into the phcs we changed the posting orders and got it to the district hospital so that phcs function with uh, thing i uh, next slide universalization of free drug and diagnostic is the main state the last three uh, the gen aushadi program and the diagnostics is also given free by the system that will be a Uh, uh, boost to the uh, the image building of the uh, primary health center just let me just come to that slide on with the photograph health and wellness centers i have witnessed myself in bishnupur district in manipur are you on the uh, a slide with the uh, health and wellness centers that is 44 slide slide 44 yes, yes. health and wellness centers that is a new branding of the new national health mission you know a sub center uh, a sub center wherein a community health officer post is created a retrained nurse or a pharmacist uh, or a supervisor acting as a community health officer with her anm and asha team 
and there is a lot of uh, rebranding painting renovation and uh, supply of medical medicines and uh, lab reagents are given so there is a mini hospital in every major villages and in a 24 into 7 mini hospital there the villagers own it and they found the health and wellness centers doing wonderful work i will skip this uh, community participation but community participation is the key uh, there is a great asset of social capital uh, uh, just to go to the slide uh, 46 there's only three more slides great asset of social capital this is the story of kerala kerala had 26000 asha workers about 33000 of anganwadi work yes. but what kerala had additional is about a network of 45 lakhs uh, na uh, women's uh, women social entrepreneurs women in two uh, two lakh ninety thousand neighborhood groups and in that includes about 48 transgender groups in addition to that, there were about 21,682 elected ward members of 978 village GPs and 60 uh, municipalities and five corporation councils. In addition, there was 45,000 extra registered volunteers for COVID pandemic. And they put in a lot of effort, not only during the 2018 flash floods and monsoon, and in the NIPA control, in, in the H1N1, uh, uh, epidemic and this year now in the COVID pandemic. We have to, in other states, uh, also this social capital has to be brought up with community participation. Then only they feel that these health buildings are ours and it is Amara aspect. So we have got these good examples of uh, Gawa Unain committees in Orissa with this women's group. And uh, also, there is Jivira of Bihar, the women uh, awakening, and even in Andhra Pradesh, coastal Andhra Pradesh, there is women's uh, 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 enlightenment and coming up, uh, taking up social responsibility. I'll quickly say one thing wealthy cities may not be the healthy cities. We saw it in Mumbai, we saw it in Delhi. If we ignore the migrant laborers who are boosting the national economy, and you ignore them, they are never enumerated, they are not provided, uh, accounted for, and they plan for any basic services, you are asking for trouble. This has to be in the uh, long-term plan or uh, medium-term plan. We have to also think in terms, which I've seen in Manipur district, uh, multi-use community centers, which can be used for any cyclone, floods, earthquake, and recent pandemic and lockdown period for relocation relief camps isolation or quarantine or, and it can be used for community meetings and social events it's a good investment for such uh, a thing um, i'll this is i'll make this as the last uh, uh, point telemedicine has to come as a regular modality for health promotion follow up of non communicable diseases mental illness palliative treatment counseling aid. We need regional research lab, and you need a state-based communicable disease control cell like National Disease Control uh, uh, CDC uh, or in USA. You have you must have uh, exclusive uh, public health research teams because clinicians can't spend much time on clinical epidemiology and disease. Lot of goal, uh, research could have been initiated if we had exclusive research team during this pandemic, because that is the time data was flowing. We haven't recorded that. And we give more funds to local self-governments. What Kerala has done, it's about 50% of the state budget is in the local self-government. They are managing the schools, uh, PHCs and health centers and whatnot, primary schools, everything. We need to have Clinical Establishment Act as a regulation of the private sector. We need to have liquid generation plans in every district hospital of 150 ton hospital so and 50 bed isolation ward separately can be used for a multi-purpose ward like thing with icu facility and oxygen provision we can have oxygen factories at least one per state and this slide i'm skipping and just the last slide you see the women with the drummers and see the women the these are a group of women social entrepreneurs of kerala who are taught even to climb pocket trees and to use men folks uh, things like the drum uh, for social function but these drum beats are uh, heralding a new uh, new horizon of women empowerment more social equity and women asking and everything starts from a grassroots level planning communities and not
comes together Many of the things, even uh, uh, many topics in public health in India, we still uncover topics that uh, I know that he knows, and uh, I have uh, only uh, concentrated the few of them. Sorry for the 18 or 15 minutes in the beginning. Okay, thank you. So, thank you, Dr. I think uh, I'm not getting a clear voice of Dr. Anthony. I don't know if there is some net problem or some other you problem. Can, you can tell my voice, no? I, I have I some can, net problem. Uh, I, 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 I can hear your voice. I can hear your voice. Yeah, it, yeah but your voice is breaking. Okay, any, okay. anyhow, thank you very much. So now we have time for uh, some questions. And uh, if the participants have questions, they can uh, post to Dr. Anthony. I have a question, Dr. Anthony. This was a brilliant uh, presentation. Thank you so much for bringing in data and your wide experience into this. And your pictures were so revealing and really a good presentation. Things that we would not have known in the city and you being a national monitor have traveled around and brought this to our knowledge. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, Dr. Anthony, I had a question. Um, can we think, I'm thinking from the fiscal angle, the budget which you said is 1.3% of uh, the, and that I think is the central government. If we add the state government's budgets into health, what would it be then? Now, I'm not very sure of that figure. And that's why I'm asking you that question. So if we have to look at the consolidated countrywide health allocation of all types of governments, center, state, and local bodies, what would it be? Related to this is, um, I feel because health is a state issue, the local bodies, Panchayati Raj institutions, and the municipal corporations have to play a prominent role in health also. And I did not see in my limited experience, I'm an economist, not a health person, not a health professional. I haven't seen any efforts being made by local bodies or uh, municipal corporations and Panchayati Raj to open an hospital. I know that there is a health clinic in villages and uh, some of them are connected through telemedicine, very few of them. But I was wondering, the country has municipal corporations, which are size of a, sometimes a state, Baroda, Ahmedabad, Mumbai, Calcutta, Chennai, they're huge municipal corporations. Don't they have any responsibility towards health of the people they are get taxing and they have representatives? And related to this is my final question, and it's all put together. Should we now, post COVID wave two, should we now, think in terms of an integrated health system in the country, which should connect Yunani, Ayurveda, homeopathy, and allopathy. And there, why I ask you this question is, if Indians were leading a healthy lifestyle, had a better yogic exercises and pranic exercises, maybe their immunity would have been better to face the pandemic. Maybe, uh, maybe we need more scientific research on Baba Ramdev's and uh, uh, art of living, all those exercises that they teach us. But in any case, should we have a well integrated network? You proposed the Indian Health Service on the lines of Indian Administrative Service. I am suggesting a complete network, like in the education system, we have the local schools, Hindi medium schools, Punjabi medium schools, convent schools, high-end high schools. Can we similarly think in terms of a network of complete medical system in our country? Thank you, Dr. Anthony. Okay, so Dr. Anthony, I had asked you those questions. Would you like to answer those? Can you repeat the question? I didn't hear what So my question was very simple that the data which you showed us, 1.3% of GDP as health, 
I was wondering, yeah. it is only of the center. If we add state and local bodies, municipal corporations and all that, how much would it add up to? My second question was that should the municipal corporations and states also not play an active role, especially in Panchayati Raj institutions and municipalities in extending the medical facilities? And I had related to this that in the country, we are very rich in the sense that we have a successful Ayurvedic, Yunani, homeopathy, and allopathy system. Should all of them not spread a network of medical facilities and spread across the municipal corporation and the Panchayati Raj institutions so that we have a good healthy network of uh, good healthy uh, network um, for all of us? So those were some okay. of the issues okay. that I had raised. Okay, I'll try to answer the I'm I'm putting my video off just to improve the quality. Uh, just wondering uh, that this that is your voice very clearly. We can't break over the mobile. And what I, what should be uh, what I wanted to know is my audio clear there. Uh, no, we don't see. I, I don't, I even, I have an option video and uh, that also, uh, yeah, is the video on now? Is the, my video, I, I on my screen, I can see my video and my audio is also on. Not on the mobile, I'm just saying in the system, in the web Oh, there is a problem connecting to the network. This is a daily that's, that's okay, Dr. Anthony. Yeah, I, I, uh, anyway, I can tell you that over the phone, one is the uh, integration in the further system. One of the principles of health motion were integration of values also and give the effective improvement to work with them to either have any of the iron systems. In the same location. So there were two principles. One is cafeteria approach of offering different modalities of the system. Number two, try to co-locate as far as much as possible in the same health uh, health uh, facility. So many of the district hospitals had an eye strain, homeopathy, Ayurveda, and all sorts of treatment modalities of uh, massage and everything. So that was entering. But I, these uh, services were all controlled by Irish ministry, which uh, uh, which was a separate ministry itself and with a lot of funding. Now, it is in different levels of implementation and integration in different states. Chattisgarh, Himachal Pradesh, Kerala, Kerala is like in both types of pattern. Uh, but Chattisgarh and uh, some other states had a good integration. Now, Northeast also some places, there is a good integration of eyes. So the uh, budget is there, enough and more budget is there for eyes to some, but people coming forward and utilizing it's very patchy and uh, uh, the difference in state to state. So that is the third question. The second question is, yes, it is true, a lot of municipalities and uh, local self governments now spend money on health. Now, to what extent, in the calculation of what proportion of GDP is spent, I'm not sure recently may be much more uh, competent to say because you see the statistical data. What I understand is this 1.3 percentage of the total GDP is worth the, the uh, central government as well as state government together spent. But local, yeah, I think uh, the, own generation this is total, the, especially municipal corporations. I don't know. Yeah, this is total uh, health spending, uh, public health spending, 1.3 percent, and uh, I think including uh, private, it is around 4 percent or 5 percent. 
including private yes. is around 4 to 5 percent of GDP. Okay. All right. Yeah. There is a question from the audience. I can read it. Is it possible to fix the yeah. health system function only with public sector? If so, why do we need private sector in health? Uh, or can we effectively regulate the private health system? See, we, we think to the level of uh, public health uh, system developed and fully meeting the requirement uh, is uh, it's a long way. Either we must have a Cuba or uh, NHS National Health Service model of UK, where the 100 percentage care curative system is provided by the national uh, public health system, and there is no cost of private practice. In fact, surely the private practice is and private the sector is coming in, and the American health system is like that. They recruit voluntary, not for profit, and for profit private sector into the public health uh, uh, system, which is more of insurance supported. So uh, we cannot, it is impossible to say only public health now because many decades of private sector managing and providing services is there. And it will be foolish to denounce that and properly remove them. So that is why when the citizens are provided security care from the private sector, we have got a overseeing responsibility. They get their value for money. So they get good services and, uh, uh, and uh, they are not exploited. That's why the state's role is one is standard uh, treatment guidelines are followed. Highly medical ethics is, uh, or ethical practice is followed, and they are not exploited. And that role is there. Just because the private sector is allowed to function doesn't mean it is. Just like the, the many states, Karnataka, Karnataka, all even went to the extent of uh, private sector because that for ICU care or COVID pandemic uh, control activity. So same thing and our team role is there. It is not absolutely free. You can do anything. Uh, we have no control. You charge them anything that you want. It should not be. Now, uh, you know, there is Nagesha having a question. Mr. Nagesha, do you want to ask your question yourself? Or I can read it, of course, but yeah. if you want to ask yourself and explain it better, it'd be good. Yeah, sir, please, please. Yeah, 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 yeah sir, hear you. please go through, sir. Yeah, please Mr. Nagesha, we can hear you. Yes, yeah. sir. Uh, sir uh, sometimes we have a, I, I have a, this paradigm of uh, the constitution has provided okay. state government has given a uh, health sector is under private uh, state government whereas the responsibility comes to the state and uh, sometimes right now the current covid uh, vaccination case state governments are quite enough not to take any much initiative they are they, they are blaming the central government and here yeah, something like state government blames the central government central government blames the state state governments and uh, this is a kind of a situation uh, how to fix this issue and uh, my my worry is and uh, in karnataka from karnataka and regulating it uh, with a private sector can we fix the problem see uh, two issues now between tender and state in health health is a state subject as per the constitutional center and based and things like that state is that but Ever since independence, the central government had a major share of funding the state, and it is utilized for family planning control, malaria eradication, malaria control program, smallpox eradication. So, based on the history, and ever since in 1985, universal immunization program started, and their coaching, setting up, vaccine procurement, all were done initially by UNICEF. Slowly handed over to the union government. And it was central government was procuring vaccine and consumable for immunization themselves and giving to state it as for the population purpose. Now we from 1985 
uh, to 21, 2020, uh, 20 plus uh, 35 years in analytics uh, practice, why we suddenly change 62 the state to attack and this demarcation? Still, there are national control programs of data process, manually control, all are different programs. And it is uh, even state government prevail upon state governments, uh, national government prevail upon state government to achieve the targets and be out of the state to spend the fund properly and implement the program. So suddenly this has become really unfortunately a blame game going on, which is unwarranted and never in a pandemic, in an health emergency. This should not have been done. But unfortunately, that is the reality. But uh, uh, immunization, uh, uh, vaccination of uh, uh, yes, a national program, it has to be the, uh, the vaccine or whatever has to be uh, procured centrally. That is more advantageous. And uniform guidelines have to be. Uh, that is the first point of this question. Second is, see, the private sector, we are not saying we are going and entering into their profit model. Yeah, they, we are not going to enter into the day-to-day management. What we are asking them to follow standard treatment guidelines, rational drug therapy, rational application diagnostic tools, and, and accountability. You have all case records transmissible. There is a, a, a mortality review conducted and uh, mortality review uh, conducted and cause of the uh, the diagnosis is clear. Treatment. It cannot be that you don't ask any questions. Once you are admitted, you sign the form. Anything in the interest of the patient, we will do. Don't ask any questions. That is very autocratic uh, attitude by the private sector. And professional organization has to play a big role. This is from, come from within. And if it is lacking, it has to be enforced. Thank you, Dr. Anthony. There's one more question. Yeah. Brahma Siri Ralapali. I would, if he's in the audience, yeah. I would like him to ask the question himself. Mr. Ralapali? Uh, sir, you I, I, I am a lady, sir. I will introduce yeah, myself. I'm sorry. I'm no sorry. Problem. No Madam, problem. Because of the you? variation, my name will be first, I think. My surname. Sure. So okay. just I have, uh, it was a very interesting session about the health services and uh, it was a timely, much needed uh, issue also to be enlightened. But only argument is, um, shall we go for privatization or shall we go for nationalization? There are two parts. And um, India also privatized her health sector long ago. It was not nothing new. But today, uh, during this pandemic, some kind of restoration of uh, quality health services has been raised uh, because of uh, crisis in public health sector. We know the reasons why there is a crisis and then uh, even just now they were discussing about uh, differences between the approach towards health services by national government, the central government, as well as the state government whether it is related to vaccination or policy interventions, et cetera. But only thing is uh, in Indian context, health services are very, very inadequate, especially in the rural area. During this second phase of uh, pandemic, we are seeing uh, lots of uh, deaths or rather, you know, absence of uh, prompt health services, especially in rural areas. In urban areas also, there was a crisis. But uh, at least affordable community or uh, those uh, who belong to like uh, slightly well off or those who are covered under insurance or those who have uh, been taken care of even senior citizens, etc. For them, it was a little better. But there are situations where health is to be prioritized. Already the central government has invested so much, but it is not uh, adequate. We know there is the issue of recruitment of doctors, emergency recruitment. Now then, even from military services, other services, they are also helping government of India, even state governments, even uh, like philanthropists are also helping. So many things are happening like voluntary groups, civil society groups. 
but then when we look at the policy at least india should have a grand strategy to mold her health so that um, no one will point the needle in future that india doesn't care for health because health right is so madam right. madam i'm right. sorry uh, yes, madam i'm right. sorry uh, you know we are running badly out of time okay, so can you precisely right. ask what your question is my question is health right is a basic human right, sir. Health right is a basic human right. So we have to ensure that everyone is able to enjoy it. That is my argument. That's your observation, not a question. Thank you for yes. that. Thank yeah, you, that's sir. okay. Now there is one more question which has come, and if Dr. Anthony wants to answer that, um, Dr. Anthony, this question is from Dr. Shamala Devi. If Miss, if Dr. Shamla hmm. Devi is in the audience, can you please ask your question yourself? Uh, good I evening, sir. Yeah. Uh, my question Madam, is. Uh, be brief uh, and focused. Sir. Yes, sir. Uh, my question is regarding the migration of doctors for higher studies who go for their MD and MS and settle there. What about uh, the cost uh, that we have spent, the government has spent on them, and how far we are going to? Um, increase the staff, nurses, and the doctors and health staff in our country, sir. If this keeps on uh, increasing, that's my question, sir. Dr. Shamla, very, very good question. One thing is uh, there is an anomaly between the need and the supply. With regard to uh, post uh, Medical Council of India has got its own uh, restrictions and uh, criteria. How many postgraduate, uh, for this many postgraduate seats, how many teaching faculty have to be there, for how many is so? And uh, for a medical college that is given, you find a uniform two seats each or four seats each in a medical college, an allocation for various companies. Now, the need of the public health system, you find certain places like anesthesia, uh, certain uh, courses like anesthesia, obstetrics, pediatrics, ophthalmology, you don't have that many PGC in comparison to the need. So there is an anomaly between what postgraduate what we needed and what. Now, what happens is we have put in those who have passed out from undergraduate studies to have uh, yeah. so, uh, undergraduate studies those who are finished a uh, two-year bond uh, after PG and uh, some uh, it is compulsory all over the uh, all over the country and now many states are following that but some states do not uh, uh, do not enforce it now if we are spending public taxpayers money and soon after post graduation they just leave the country or go to uh, private sector, leave the government service to which it has got an obligation. There should be some way of uh, strict uh, controlling measure so that their services are utilized in the public health system. Uh, same is the case with uh, nurses. I mean, we need a huge number of good quality nursing school graduates, all migrating to the girls, Canada, Australia, and UK. Because that is, uh, they are in great demand, and it is, uh, they are looking for. Then, at least general nursing graduates, which we must have a, a deployment plan. Actually, I was arguing a district based uh, recruitment of candidates for assigned public health experience. This particular district needs 10 or 15 nurses. So you sponsor the 15 nurses uh, to get uh, educated and we provide them for 10 years or whatever a minimum period under that obligation. That they, only after that, they will be free if the state is paid. Otherwise, they, they, have got, uh, they pay the full fees and they go for their own better future. This is also their choice. But the government must make sure that whatever required number of staff nurses general nurses and lab technicians, physiotherapists, they sponsor, they make, and they utilize and effectively employ them. That has to be the policy. I want to ask a question to both Dr. Ratan and Dr. Anthony. Both of you are national monitors. Both of you have worked in the health system for a very long time. 
So my question is, and any one of you can answer or both of you can answer, is there any estimate in the country of how many nurses we actually need for adequate health and how many we have, the gap? How many doctors we need? Yeah, we have no, let me finish. How many doctors we need and how many we have, the gap? How many hospital beds we need and how many we have, the gap? Once we have this analysis with us, can we start thinking in terms of easing the norms for establishing more hospitals of allopathy, which needs four years of rigorous training, as well as anatomy and uh, dissecting the human cadaver and all those, more Ayurvedic institutions, more homeopathic institutions, and more Yunani institutions. Has any such, any such estimates been prepared? And if we have prepared it, in how much time can we fill the gap uh, by opening up these institutions, relaxing the strict norms of having one medical hospital, but 20 acres of land around it free, and those sort of quote unquote stupid stipulations which have restricted the spread of medical colleges? Dr. Anthony or Dr. Ratan, any one of you who would like to answer this? Yes, uh, I would uh, see a line of recommendation, but there are established maps globally, established criteria. We have got about one doctor per thousand, whereas we don't have that much. Uh, 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 we, uh, uh, we are having uh, 10,000 population, uh, one doctor. There are, there are of things that people have got it. And similarly, we India got 1.7 nurses per 1,000 population. The WHO prescribed three nurses per 1,000 population. And with regard to nurses and the general nursing, uh, nursing graduates and the ESP nursing graduates, it is not the lack of production that is there. It is uh, yeah, the lack of availability of those graduate nurses. That's a big dilemma. Same is the case with the doctors. If you say uh, the thing is uh, the doctor population uh, ratio is not met, or almost it appears better as, as far as the number of graduates that is turned out. But it is highly skewed by the way most of the medical colleges are in Karnataka, Tamil Nadu, and Andhra and Kerala, uh, whereas uh, part of Maharashtra. There are the vast patches of northern India and the southeast is so there is a there is a lack of adequate medical training institutions in the scientific belt as well as in the northeast. This is one skewed uh, 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 the uh, number of medical colleges where they get trained. Now even when they get trained, they go after graduation. If they don't migrate to foreign countries, uh, they try to settle down in urban area. So there is a skewed dis uh, proportion of dispersion of already qualified graduates, doctors, who are not joining state voluntary in private practice in uh, uh, very comfortable areas, not uh, not too remote areas. So there is, again, the deployment is a problem. And how do you motivate? These are, these are the things which is uh, bothering the government. Uh, and not that the norms are not available as it and we cannot as i said we don't have a medical education uh, plan in uh, where the needs are uh, mapped and based on the needs there is an intake there is a fixed norm according to the MCI regulation whichever institution got the permission that any graduates there so, but there is no attempt uh, to streamline that, the need was a gap. Ratanji can add uh, anything more. Yeah, you have nicely covered. But uh, what I want to say, one is the thing that uh, rural versus urban. Most of the doctors or nurse, nurses, they want to settle in urban areas. So as a result, you see, uh, we have seen that uh, these uh, vacancies of uh, nurse midwives Around 70% of the vacancies are there uh, in the community health centers or in the primary health centers. Similarly, around 70% of the vacancies are, vacancies of specialists are there at the community health centers. 
so this is a big problem i mean uh, we don't have enough uh, either we don't have enough uh, specialists or they don't want to work in the community health centers so this is a vicious circle we have everything uh, in uh, buildings are there equipments are there but we don't have the specialists to uh, provide the services our uh, government is doing some uh, taking some steps to increase the number of specialists now they have introduced a scheme of uh, bonus bonus marks for the mbbs officers who will be serving in the rural areas so you must have uh, heard there is a resistance in the in madhya pradesh for this scheme that we mean uh, why why this uh, sort of uh, uh, bonus marking for serving in rural areas is there so 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 this type of problems uh, government tries uh, tries to uh, take corrective steps but uh, the steps are not adequate i think uh, and we don't have enough specialists or nurse midwives uh, for posting in the rural areas thank you so much both of you are experts you given such a good answer as an economist my analysis would be there is lack of supply we need to have many more allopathic hospitals uh, colleges and schools pump so many nurses and doctors in the system that urban areas become flooded and they have no alternative but to survive to get into rural areas i think this yeah. is simple all universities should be told open medical colleges immediately and train them that is one my own suggestion as a, as an economist would be ayurvedic yunani and homeopathic institutions should also be encouraged because they can serve in preempting or building immunity so that people who land up in emergency circumstances and have to be moved to allopathic hospitals is minimized and i think both of you working with the government in different capacities if you like this idea why not push it so that we have a network of medical services the final point i want to make is i have generally noticed all the insurance companies pay the bill for going to the doctor and the cost incurred why don't they start thinking we pay them premium in huge quantities why don't they give us vouchers for staying healthy they should be able to reimburse my going to yoga class the cost of going to the yoga class or going to the gym so that i stay healthy why should i be pushed to the hospital and then they reimburse my bill why don't they ensure that i stay healthy and they can have healthiness vouchers yes, or doctor. wellness vouchers and cover our cost the last point i want to express is before we close you know i'm very worried and i'm just a colleague like yours but been into policy we have had this time the concentrators coming from china the oximeters coming from china i'm not surprised if tomorrow we will have nurses and doctors coming from china to treat us so before that happens let's build a army of our own doctors and nurses and para staff which can help us take care of health of our own people uh, dr anthony has marked that rural areas plus northeast i think we need to address this in a far more regimented way and on a war footing and with both of you being at such such helm of affairs being national monitors you can really help us a lot with this i hand over the mic back to the chairman of the session dr ratan chand to give his concluding observations and then i will conclude by making some announcements thank you charan i uh, let me thank again dr antony for agreeing to uh, Uh, to deliver this lecture at this uh, webinar he has covered lots of area uh, restructuring of the health systems which is being done and which should be done so i think uh, the participant must uh, have been benefited by this uh, webinar except all the uh, technical problems i think uh, presentation was excellent and i thank him very much uh, for for uh, agreeing to and delivering this lecture thank you very much dr anthony and uh, uh, again also i thank all the participants who, who have joined uh, this webinar
So over to Dr. Charan. Uh, I want to again thank all of you, Dr. Anthony, for delivering the talk, Dr. Ratanchan, for chairing the session, and the participants having spent time on a Saturday to be with us. It's such an important burning topic, and the more we discuss, we churn out better, and then we have some conclusions which we can share and build a better health system in our country. So I want to thank each one of you for spending time participating, asking questions. I'm sorry, uh, as a CEO of the think tank, uh, I do not know what went wrong. We'll try to fix it up, but we had lots of teething problems today. Most of it, I think, came from the uh, Cisco website. We'll try to figure out why that happened. In any case, I apologize for about 25 minutes of loss of time that took place here today. This uh, beautiful webinar will be available, the recording tomorrow. If you want to share it with others, please do it. If you find it as useful and draw some conclusion, please mention about it on Twitter. Uh, share your thoughts with your local bodies, municipal corporations, states, so that we can have a better health system in our country. Tomorrow, uh, on Monday, June 14, we have another excellent webinar on COVID and MSMEs, and we have Professor Bala uh, Subramania from Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore, and we have uh, Dr. Sinha, who has spent years in lending to the MSME sector, and now a professor at Bangalore. Both of them will be telling us what should be done, as you know, the attrition rate, as well as the mortality rate in MSMEs is much more than the COVID mortality rate. And that leads to employment, poverty, and social issues. So both of them will be covering that. Welcome to join us. And on Friday, 18th of June, we have another webinar on national security, <coughs> covered under national security. The topic is India and Nepal. And a master Manjeev Puri will be addressing that. So I welcome you all to come and spend time with us under this knowledge series. And let me conclude by saying our think tank looks at policy oriented research and research based policy advice. If any one of you have anything to suggest to us, you're most welcome to write to me or Dr. Ratan and we'll, we'll be so happy to receive your views. With this, let me conclude once again, thanking everyone and apologizing for the technical snags that we faced today. Thank you very much for staying with us. And um, we did the telephonic and webinar combination. I think this is where we Indians are. Never give up the Jugadu Indians. And at the end of the day, we get the best out of it. So thank you very much. Goodbye. <laughs> okay, thank you.